Well, how's it going, everybody? It is Tuesday, and this is live from the bench on Dylan Talks Tone. How are you? This is a live video, just so you know. Now, last week, we had some technical difficulties with cameras and stuff. Hopefully, we don't have that trouble this week. But just to nip it all in the bud, if we have some trouble live sometimes, it's because we're doing some really cool stuff. And if it doesn't work out and 100 people comment the same thing in the comments, it doesn't do any good. But thanks anyway. So let's, uh, what are we going to talk about this week? We didn't really come up with a, um, we didn't really come up with a theme or anything for this week. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what's under the hood of a $200 guitar. And as we disassemble this guitar completely, we're going to take this telly apart completely. And as we do that, every little piece, we're going to talk about the various aspects of the $200 guitar and how it differs from stuff that is more expensive. Is it acceptable or not for, you know, what exact aspects of these, of these cheaper guitars are actually cheaper? What aspects do you not have to worry about at all as we continue to explore this whole thing? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and take this thing apart um so here we go uh we got this this is a one of these squire affinity tellies so uh 199 uh you can get them on amazon i mean they're they're cheap i actually this is probably the well anyway this is the second one of these that i've had and i'm actually getting another strat so let's go ahead and grab our tools same thing, I'm using cruise tools like I always do. I do have the comment section going over here. Uh, we'll put a link in the description after the video and I'll tell you where I got this guitar. I actually had already snipped off one of the strings to make sure that I got the size for the tuners correct. So as we talk about those, so first of all, let's just get the strings off of it. And as we're talking about, oh yeah, it's not a through body. As we're talking about strings, these have a nine set of nines on them. For students, nines are great. In fact, for a lot of people, nines are great. I'm personally not a nines guy. I like tens, but you know. That is a personal choice. It doesn't necessarily matter one way or the other. Um, let's see. What do we want to take off next? I guess let's do this. Let's take these tuners off because this might be one of the things that we discuss. And I want to show you something kind of interesting about this particular tuner set that is on this guitar. Okay. So... Um, because when you're shopping for tuners, you might get a, you might get kind of hung up here and I'll show you why in just a second. I'll put my head back in a box there and you should have non frozen. Let's go ahead and loosen all these. Now, first of all, you notice how loose all this stuff is when you get a brand new guitar very first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that all this stuff is actually tight because as you can see it is not but as we disassemble these tuners we're going to talk about the difference between vintage style tuners and some more expensive style tuners and these ones there are two different styles of uh, two different sizes of tuner holes so this one right here is the 10 millimeter size and you see how this one has two pins? We have these on our website. We have a replacement version of these on our website, but the, you have to get the right ones. You can't just go ahead and just get any tuner you want because see how it has two little holes drilled there to locate so it doesn't spin around? And I'll show you what that looks like on the back of the neck. See how you have these two little holes drilled to locate so nothing spins out of the way there. 
and it keeps it all nice and all nice and snug. Alright, let's go ahead and get these tuners off. And I think in another video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna time lapse the reassembly of this guitar with new parts. I think that's gonna kind of be fun. As we talk about this, kind of cheaper tuners evidently uh, for many people. I, you know, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other um, for some people, but a lot of people have problems with these tuners on these guitars. They say they slip a lot and they say they start to strip out after a while. Uh, I have not found that problem to be super bad. Um, on the, one, the little mini strat that I have, the $100 mini strat, those tuners are kind of cheesy and need to be replaced. But what I would tell you is don't just run out and replace stuff just because the internet tells you that you have to replace it. Um, these tuners are not terrible. And then once they start to wear out or start to give you trouble or you have one that gives you trouble, just replace the set. Um, if you go to DylanTalksTone.com, like I said, we have the drop-in uh, version of this that makes it to where you don't have to modify the guitar at all. And you can just put these, put these in. So we've got the tuners off. Remember that whatever tuners you get, they are 10 millimeter holes. Okay, They're not the vintage diameter ones. And they do have, at least on these Fender Affinities, they do have these two post uh, patterns. Some of them, other guitars have a single post here. Some guitars don't have any post. The ones that don't have any post, you got to worry about those holes showing after you put the tuners on. So you kind of have to verify what you already have when you're replacing them to make sure that they're correct. Um, this little string tree here, is just a basic little string tree. And in fact, these things work really well. We're gonna take it off because we said that we would disassemble everything today. But this is just a little basic string tree. They work great. There's really no reason to replace this. Um, I, you know, Some people will go to like a Teflon one or go to a roller one, but honestly, that's just kind of bragging rights and swag. Now, if you were going to like a tremolo or a Bigsby or something and you wanted a little less friction, that's fine. But there's really no friction to be had on a stock telly with a stock setup like this. There's really no, uh, nothing, nothing to worry about there. So let's go ahead and um, let's see. Actually, I was going to get power tools to do this, but I guess we'll just do it by hand. Let's take the neck off. We're going to take the neck off of the guitar. This looks sort of weird the way I'm holding it, but the, the reason I'm holding it this way is because it holds it against the body as the screws become loose and it doesn't flop around on me. I'm taking three screws out. The reason I'm doing from the bench at the dining room table is like I, I was thinking about it. You know, it's like, well, you want to go from the bench. Yeah, that's cool. But most people don't really have a workbench. Right? I mean, oh, hey, I'll, I'll give you guys a little uh, sneak preview as we're talking here. Uh, don't forget, we got the... Uh, Boss Katana Mini that we're going to give away at the end of the month on our Patreon page. Um, and I will tell you right now, a couple of really cool things that are coming to Patreon. One is, in December, we're going to give away more than one thing to more than one person. It's not just going to be one piece of gear in December. I already know what it is. And Leslie already knows what it is. We talked about it the other day. So we're going to give away three pieces of gear in December, not just one. So you got to get over to Patreon and join the Patreon as a $5 member and you will be automatically entered to win what we're going to give away either in November or December. Um, 
I haven't implemented any rules for that yet, but I think what we're going to do is you can only win once every 90 days. I think that's pretty much what we're going to do, just like a radio station. And we added another goal on Patreon. When we hit 500 a month, I think I'm going to implement a way to give away like four guitars a year. I think it's something like that. We're actually going to give away whole guitars. It's going to be pretty cool. So anyway, just a little sneak peek to what we got going on over there. Okay. Let's pull off this neck. Now, one of the things... Uh, first of all, let's talk about the neck itself. The neck itself is just, it's just a maple neck and it's got a maple slab on it and it is actually, I think this is a two piece. Yeah, this is a two piece maple slab neck, um, with a truss rod. The frets are good. There's no reason why this neck can't be used. It plays nice. There's no reason why it can't be used. It has a plastic nut on it, but to tell you the truth, uh, before I took it apart, I checked it, and the nut is cut really well. There's no reason to replace it. I mean, if you wanted to. See, the thing, people overthink all this stuff, and they think that just because it's plastic makes it not sound good. It's so stupid because bone sounds different, but it doesn't necessarily sound better. It just sounds different. Um... And like Graph Tech and Tusk, they sound different too. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, they just sound different. This is a good neck, man. It's a really good neck. And it, it was drilled properly and there's no finish on it. So it's nice and smooth. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that neck right there. Now the fretwork might be a little bit questionable, but for a telly, it's not too bad. I checked it before we took it apart. Um, and a little fret polish with the lizard spit fret polish kit. And I think this thing would be ready to go. There's no reason to replace this. I would, I would totally play this, totally play this neck. Okay. Now, one of the questions that people have been asking me, in fact, some people talked a lot of trash on Facebook when we bought this guitar and we talked about modifications that we might want to make. And they were saying that they think that this body is junk because it's plywood. And then there's another little secret that I just found out right here too as well. So let's go back to our other camera here. This is a pine body. See the grains in there? Nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, everybody wants to say pine is terrible. I knew it was pine because I had another Squire Affinity in here that I was working on the other day, and I actually had to whittle out the control cavity a little bit, and as soon as I hit it with the Dremel, I was like, hmm, that smells like pine. It's a pine body. Now look at this. There is a paper shim. That's actually not a paper shim. It's a piece of sandpaper. That is a piece of 180 grit sandpaper that was cut and put in there as a shim. That is a fantastic idea for a shim. Again, there's nothing wrong with shims. People all the time, they think there's a problem with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Even expensive Fender guitars use shims in the neck pocket, just like this one. This is really, really cool. It's fun to find this out. It's funny that there's so much sawdust in here, like it's just been cut or something. It's like a brand new, brand new thing. All right, well that was a pretty cool discovery. That part I didn't expect at all. I knew it was pine because I cut into one the other day, but I did not know that there was gonna be a shim in that neck pocket. That is pretty stinking cool. Let's go ahead and then Let's look into this body a little bit more. Now that we don't need a neck rest, because we don't have a neck, tell you what, let's take a quick gander back past our comments really quick. And Barry Forster, I want to hear what kind of telly you have and see what I recognize about it. 
Uh, let's see. Do 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 do. I only replaced one set because the finish on the originals was worn out. Yep, exactly. Let's see. Dining room table is my my workbench also. Need more information on this page that he's talking about. What are you talking about? What information are you talking about? And what do you need me to get you? Because that's what we do here. So uh, if you would please, Stephen Crowell, um, elaborate on what you mean by that. Need more info on this page he's talking about. Uh, let's see, Fender makes nice workstation mat and neck support that stores in a tube. You know, I need to get one of those. I just use a dish, uh, a, a bath towel on the table with a neck support. But yeah, one of those roll up ones, those are pretty sweet. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, um, I don't wanna lose that chim. I think that's a really cool, that's a really cool thing. We're actually gonna take a picture and make a Facebook post about that later. Uh, let's see. Well, let's get the control cavity off of here next. So the control cavity is going to be the next best thing to take apart because um, here, let's put my head back in a box because we want to disconnect the controls and talk about the controls that are in here stock from the factory in a $200 guitar. Because remember, the whole point of doing this experiment today, taking this guitar completely apart, is how would we compare it to a more expensive guitar? And here is how we would compare it. So here's a couple interesting things. These little uh, three-way switches they work okay, but they wear out very quickly. Um, they are not super durable. Here's another interesting thing. See how little these pots are? They're very, very small. Now, everybody wants to say that a pot is going to make a guitar sound better. Eh, it's just a resistor. But it's just like anything else. So let's talk about this for a second. That mini pot is very, very small. And the regular size pot is probably like 50% bigger. One of the main reasons that's beneficial to have a bigger regular size pot is because it makes it more adjustable. It's just like a gear ratio in an axle of a car. When we turn, if, the, if it's very, very small and we turn it a little bit, it goes a long way. When the pot is bigger and we turn it a little bit, it only goes a short way. So it's just like a gear ratio in a car the larger pot it doesn't make it sound better but it makes it more adjustable and the taper is more usable to what you're doing so that's why i think it's it's a good thing to get rid of the cheap stuff uh, that's in here so yeah getting rid of these little baby pots and getting rid of this very uh cheap looking feeling three-way switch is going to happen in the future so we're not going to be super fancy about how we cut this out of here because it's not going back in. So we don't really care. So we'll just take that out and we'll throw that to the side. This actually has a, a thicker um, control plate on it. Some of these cheaper ones that I've worked on before were so thin that you could like bend them like foil. But I might actually reuse that. Uh, one thing that you'll run into when you replace pots on a less expensive guitar is these are probably, let's just check them really quick, a seven millimeter, yep, they're a seven millimeter diameter, which means that if you use this in an original control plate, that you'll have to drill the holes out bigger to the three eighths diameter for a real pot, like for a Borns or a CTS pot. That's why when we do these, we just build them a whole assembly that you can just drop in with the stuff already assembled on it because then you don't have to worry about drilling out holes or anything fitting. So when we sell loaded control plates for a telly, it's just a whole drop in thing. So if you have a $200 guitar, I think from their 57 bucks or something, you can put it all in and it has all the wiring included and the control plate. There's no drilling, there's no extra stuff that you have to do. 
So uh, just keep that in mind. If you have a cheaper guitar that was made in Asia, a lot of times the metric seven millimeter pots and holes and all the drillings and everything will be metric and smaller and you'll have to drill them out. So that's just something to think about. Uh, there is, there is um, a proper route in here. I don't know if we can picture this because it's all black in there. But there is a, it's deep enough here and it's deep enough here to be done correctly. There's that little hump in the middle that they've put in some of the later ones. Um, so if you want to do a super switch or something like that or a reverse control plate, you probably have to grind that out with a, a Dremel. But if you're just going to do a stock setup, I don't see any reason why you would have to change any of that. And it's got shielding paint in there, which as you know, I don't care about shielding paint in the control cavity anyway, so we're not even going to talk about it. Let's go ahead and give you a nice centered up shot for taking, uh, well, let's see, let's take this pick guard off first. Probably what we're going to do is kind of in tandem, take the pick guard off and also take off the bridge and we're going to talk about bridge types. Now this particular guitar has a thick plastic black pick guard and I think when we reassemble this with new stuff I think we're going to pick another color. So what do you guys think as we're doing this together? Uh, this project together what do you think I should do for pick guard color on this next when we put it back together um, I'll let you guys pick that in fact I'll what I'm gonna do is take a picture of this setup disassembly that we did and I'm gonna put it in the YouTube feed and on our Facebook and let everybody else pick um, what we do for pickguard color wise because I don't like this extra thick cheap pickguard it, it feels cheap um, one of the things is it doesn't have holes the the pickups are actually the pickup is actually mounted to the body and so the there's no holes here with screws for adjusting the pickup like on a modern tele and a normal modern telly so it is nice to have that adjustment um, on there I, I like that it is routed for a humbucker. Most all uh, Fender guitars now are routed for a humbucker in the neck. This includes American Standard guitars and some other stuff. You're probably not going to get a traditionally routed Patelli anymore uh, very often unless you go to like an AVRI or uh, a more expensive guitar. I could be totally missing a couple of models because I don't keep up on every little model that the that the fender that fender comes out with but this has been a very common thing that I've seen um, them do all right well let's talk about something more exciting we're gonna take this off of here because I'm gonna show you what a cheap pickup looks like we'll leave that tape in the bottom of that all right so people ask me all the time, why are the pickups that we make and more expensive pickups better and different than the stuff that comes in a $200 or a $500 or a $700 guitar? It's right here. <clears throat> Instead of having Alnico pole pieces like a normal pickup, this has steel pole pieces. And it has two ceramic bars that are actually kind of like a plastic. They're not even a good ceramic. They're like a, a plastic that are glued to the bottom of the pickup. The reason this is not awesome is because there's so much magnet here. here here's what happens. They use cheap magnets. These magnets are extremely inexpensive. They are much less inexpensive than an Alnico pickup for the same. You could put two big bars on here for much cheaper than a regular Alnico pickup. Uh, as a result of that though, it makes the pickup sound very bright and harsh. Uh, so what they do is they wind this pickup really, 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 really hot to take the harshness off. 
but the end result ends up being sort of dead and not very dynamic where you turn the volume down on the guitar and it just kind of shuts off. It just, it overdrives the whole time, even though the volume is low, the voltage that the strings make is not very dynamic. It's just on or off. And it overall is kind of has a muddy tone because they've wound it so hot to compensate for the cheap magnets that they use. It makes sense. These pickups are made in China. And I know because I was talking to a guy the other day that they cost like $3.50 or $5 or something. Really, 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 really cheap. So this is why uh, it's a kind of you get what you pay for tone wise with a cheaper pickup. And they do not sound amazing. Um, they sound okay. And for a student just starting out, it sounds like a telly. But as he wants to explore more tones and understand more things, this is one thing that I would definitely change. Don't do it too soon. Play the guitar and understand why you're making the change before you go to make this change. But those are definitely coming out of there. All right, let's go ahead and move now over to the bridge. And as soon as we get done with the bridge, we're gonna go back to our comment section and we're gonna chat a little bit about any questions that have come up over there. So, as you'll notice, as I'm taking this bridge off, this is not the traditional Telecaster kind of bridge that we normally see in an, a traditional Telecaster. You're not gonna make me take the strap pins out, are you? They don't seem cheap or there's no reason to take them out. And because it's a pine body, I don't necessarily want to take them out unnecessarily for risk of stripping out the threads and then having to deal with other problems. Okay, so one of the interesting things here, this is not a very traditional bridge. First of all, we have our six individual saddles instead of three, which for a beginner guitar is actually better because you can set up these intonations correctly um, more easily. I can set up intonation on a three saddle, three saddle bridge, no problem but a lot of beginners may have a difficult time doing this. And so these, this, this makes it very simple, but you notice this is a cheaper style bridge that is not through the body. See there, there's no string through here. The strings are, it's a top loading bridge, so it comes through here and goes this way. Also, there is screws at the top side of that bridge right there, which is sort of weird. This is a very, very cheap bridge. One thing I would say is it's possible to replace and upgrade this, but on this particular guitar, I would not spend the money. I would not put my money into replacing this bridge. If I had a limited budget for what I was gonna do to modify this guitar to make it sound better, I would not replace the bridge. A lot of people are gonna jump through the internet and scream at me and say, it doesn't sound like a real telly, blah, 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 blah. But remember, this is a beginner guitar, and at some point, he is a beginner is going to say, you know what? I'm gonna keep this guitar, and I'm gonna mod it and play around with it and do stuff, and I'm gonna get another more serious telly, at which point he's gonna take the bridge into consideration. I would not worry about modifying or messing with this bridge because you've got these holes here, you know, and you've got all this stuff to mess with. And you see, it's a three hole bridge instead of a four hole bridge, which means you would have to fill these and then drill them again and blah, 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 be a big pain. I would not mess with it. Same thing here. This is a steel pole piece. Plastic bobbin. Let's see, yep. Steel pole piece, plastic bobbin with two ceramic bars on the bottom. Same deal. Same deal. I always find it how they redundantly ground this bridge. It's pretty hilarious. It's grounded through the screws to the bridge. So, and this is grounded, so it doesn't matter, but it is kind of funny how they redundantly ground it. So there you go. There is the bridge pickup is now taken out. And this is something that I will definitely replace when we put this back together. 
because it's got that same kind of issue as the neck with the two ceramic bars. Really super overwound, really hot. But I wouldn't replace that bridge. I wouldn't even mess with that. I don't think we can retrofit uh, saddles into it either. I was looking at that earlier. I'd have to drill new holes and stuff. And This is kind of supposed to be a beginner, drop it together. What would we change versus not change sort of thing. I wouldn't mess with the bridge. I would put, uh, well, let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it. After we have it all, all apart, what are we actually going to change? Um, we're going to upgrade this guitar, and then we're going to probably make it available for sale for some of you. Um, if our Patreon gets to $500 by the end of December, we may actually give it away. Uh, we may actually give this guitar away. That's what I'm hoping to do. If our Patreon page reaches 500 bucks by the end of December, um, then then we will, then we'll give it away. Um, and I might actually give it give the person a choice between a Strat and a Tele. So that's the idea. So what are we going to do to upgrade this thing? Uh, let's kind of go in order of what we talked about. We're going to put new tuners on it. I think that's a good call. Um, we're actually also going to replace the nut on here only because I want to do a little how-to video about it. I, on this guitar, I don't know that I necessarily think it's necessary. Um, that was redundant. I don't really think it's necessary to replace the nut on a $200 guitar. But because we want to do a how-to on it and show you some different stuff, I think we're going to. We're also not going to replace the string tree. We are going to replace the tuners with a Klusen tuner that is a higher quality 19 to 1 ratio that has the proper two hole deal here and the proper diameter holes drilled. Would be the same retrofit that you would do on any Fender guitar that has that two hole tuner. Um, we also, if you don't have those and you need, have vintage style ones like on a plate or whatever, we have those too. Um, but that's the only upgrade thing I would do to the neck is we'll put a nut in it We'll put new tuners on it, and I think that's fine. We'll polish it up. We'll make sure that the frets are good There we go uh, Next thing I think we'll do I know we'll do is we're gonna replace the pickups I'm gonna put Dylan pickups flat sixes in here uh, So they're gonna be our version of like a 1960s pickup uh, really nice and bright and open sounding really really great sounding pickup I'm not gonna replace the bridge just this and because it's ugly and for no other reason but we have to have some sort of vanity mod on this guitar we're gonna go ahead and replace this pick card so I'm gonna put it in the comments uh, put it in the comments of this video uh, whether you think what color you think we should do I'm gonna post it a few places, and then we'll come up with uh, we'll come up with a consensus across all the social media platforms, and we'll let you guys decide. And I'll buy it, and we'll put it on there um, that way. And then, as we're part as part of the controls, obviously we're gonna get rid of all this, and I'm actually gonna put one of our Fender um, Telecaster control plates in here, and uh, they're gonna be pretty sweet with Borns pots and a 0.015 orange drop cap and a three-way switch and you know properly good stuff and then the other thing is all along the way while we're experimenting with this i'm thinking that um i might get a hold of jimmy at jersey shore guitar garage and uh get one of his five-way serial killer tellies strap uh, serial killer telly uh, mods where it's got a five-way switch here that does some cool stuff And we'll throw that in there for a little while too and see what you think of that That's kind of a next level upgrade But he called me the other day and he said can we try that out in one of those tellies and I was like yeah Send me one and we'll we'll talk about kind of basic upgrade versus really Next level upgrade and I'll show you what his thing sounds like. It's really cool uh, Jersey Shore guitar garage.com. We'll check that out uh, probably I, th I think that's something that we're gonna do uh, and then I, I think that's really it you know the guitar doesn't really need anything I, it's it just needs pickups and wiring and tuners and a good setup at that point you would probably have two 
50. $300 in parts and about an hour and a half of work. And you would have a total of $500 in a guitar that no matter what it says on the peg head, because people are going to make fun of you for playing it because it's an affinity te telly, which is stupid. Don't make fun of people for playing cheap guitars. But for a total of $500 in an hour and a half of labor, you would have a really killer Telecaster. Something that you'd be able to play for years and really be proud of how it sounds. And even if you upgraded to another guitar, this would be that great first guitar with those mods that would make actually make a difference and would be something that you could be really, really proud of and always keep. I mean, I have my first, I have a Japanese Stratocaster from 1985 and I still have it. There's no reason to get rid of your first cheap guitar if you do a couple things to it and make it something that you want to keep. And people will say, well, it's not worth doing it. Well, it's only a $200 guitar, so it's not worth doing it. But once you do it, it's worth keeping. So, where does that leave you, right? All right, so let's go ahead and come back over here. Let's look at our comments. Um, let's see what we got going. Boy, it's like cranking up here. Oh, the the black, the black telly with the yeah yeah yeah. Okay, hang on. Let me get back on track here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks like everybody is just hanging out and having some fun. No super big questions. I will put the link to the Patreon page in the description of this video after it's uploaded. I'll, I'll put it in the bottom here too. Um, yep, most of you have, have been able to do this stuff. Awesome. This is great. Um, Barry, you'll send it a photo. Does anyone else reverse tele control plates? I don't I don't like how it feels cuz I hit the volume knob when I play. That's why I don't do it. Let's see. How do you feel about all the fakes rebranded $200 guitars being sold as legit high-end instruments? I do not support fakes. I do not support plagiarism of any kind I do not support any sort of counterfeiting I think it's stupid and you should not do it and you should not support it I do not do that uh, that is my opinion you can do what you want obviously but you will not see any of it here um, never understood the need for body mount when you have a pick guard yeah we have a whole video on that it doesn't make any difference it makes zero difference Especially on this guitar. It makes zero difference in the tone. Yes, this is an Affinity Tele. Do you hear any difference between a Maple versus Rosewood fretboard on a Tele? Um, there is no difference. That's another one. There's no difference between the tone on it at all. I mean, people do the stupid, you know, and think it sounds different because, you know, it, it, it's stupid. But you interact with the guitar differently. If the neck feels different, you interact with it differently and you automatically play differently because of it. Fret height, um, neck material, fretboard material, how the fretboard is finished on the corners, you know, like how sharp the edges are, all that stuff matters and how your left hand or your fretting hand interacts with the guitar is all the tone there. I heard something yesterday. I'm just going to relate this very quickly. When we play differently with our hands, it literally changes the amount of current that the pickups produce. And I want you to think about that for a second. When this hand changes or this hand, 
we change something with it. We change the amount, the, the, the level of the voltage and the amount of current that the pickups produce. So whether we hold our finger this way or we hold it this way, we change the voltage and the current that the pickups are producing. That changes the sound. Your interaction with the guitar is the tone. All the other stuff is just flavor. Your interaction with the guitar is the tone because it affects how much voltage and when that voltage is produced by the pickups. Happens right here. So all the people that want to say that there's so much stuff involved and then there are other people that, well, most of the tone is in your hands. Yeah, but it's not mojo or some kind of witchcraft. It's literally when you press this way versus press this way, the amount of voltage that you're making and the current that you're producing with the pickup changes. Therefore, the sound changes, period. It's that simple. And so if you have a rosewood fretboard or a maple fretboard, and you grip the guitar differently or the fret size is different or whatever you change the voltage you change the current you change the tone period it's that simple uh let's see you put a bridge similar to that on another customer's guitar i did and i don't like it but I did, and the reason I did is because they wanted a humbucker, and converting a three-hole bridge to a humbucker, the choices were very limited. That's why I'm saying, if you have one of these, don't stress about changing it to something else. It's just, the three-hole bridge is, just, just use it. it. It'll be fine. Black pickguard is perfect. You know, if I stay black, I'm going to go black, white, black, like a, nice, a nicer guitar. I think I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. Looking forward to a new nut video. All right. Well, that looks like everybody. Y'all, here. Let's do this really quick, too. I'm going to put this Patreon link in here. You might have to. It might not, like, make it an actual link. But... <clears throat> Nuts and saddles are fun. And there is a way that you can streamline your process and I'll show you how to do it. The cool part is, is 99% of the time, unless you're doing a nut completely from scratch, you don't really need to think that hard. A lot of times it's just a couple of passes with a nut file to make all the difference in the world or completely ruin it. But most of the time to make all the difference in the world and make it super simple. I think that's it, y'all. We took a telly all the way apart. This is really, really fun. I'm excited uh, to do these mods, and I'm excited to uh, share them with you. Maybe we'll do some sort of time-lapse thing. I haven't even really decided. I was actually going to do this outside today because I've been doing all this shooting outside, and it's just been way more fun. But it's raining again, and so that kind of put a damper on it. So... Again, this is stuff that you can do at your own kitchen table. Thanks for hanging out with me today at Live on the Bench with Dylan Talks Tone. Do me a favor and hit a like on this video and hit a subscribe and share it and all that stuff so as many people as possible know about what we're doing here because when we start giving guitars away, it's going to completely change everything. And I, I've been wanting to do it and I think we finally found a way. We're giving away three items next month. Three items. I already bought them. They actually get here in the mail today. We're giving away this $100 amp at the end of the month. And if I can get my Patreon to 500 bucks by the end of the year, we're going to give a guitar away. I'm actually going to give a guitar, this guitar right here. I'm going to give it away for free. To one lucky winner. And then I think starting in 2019, if we can keep our Patreon at about that $500 level or more, we're going to do it like four times a year. We're going to do it quarterly. 
and we're going to buy a guitar, we're going to mod it all up, we're going to do the thing, and then we're going to give it away, in addition to all the other stuff that we're doing. But it's something that I've always wanted to do, is get my YouTube channel and get everything to the point where we could give a guitar away. And this is the way we can do it. And the thing is, is it's so cool that you all can be a part of it. Um, and you all have an effect on everything that we're doing here. Um, so I really appreciate everybody who has supported us to this point. And if you've watched any of the videos for the last couple days and on into this next couple weeks, you're going to see that our video content has just completely leveled up. If you go to DylanTalksTone.com right now and look at our website, you're going to see that it's completely just like everything's getting better. I'm just really trying to put a lot of attention into the product visually that we give you and the videos that we give you and giving stuff back to you and everything. I'm just really trying to focus on that right now. So thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. This is Dylan Talks Tone. I hope everybody has a good day and we will see you on the internet.